I'm Ricardo Sai, I'm a director and photographer, and I'm here to have an espresso with uh, Marco Gambino, writer and actor based in London and originally from Sicily. So, Marco, a couple of words about who are you and what do you do? <clears throat> okay, you almost have said it. So, I'm an actor and I'm a writer, and um, uh, I um, mainly work on stage and also TV and cinema, but um, um, I come from a family of artists. That, that, that's, I think, very important to say because I believe I inherited from this family we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what, who I am. So, Absolutely, yeah. And absolutely, we, uh, you kind of already introduced the theme of the day, which is, uh, so all these series are, it's, it's about storytelling. And today we're going to talk about uh, stories in art. I know you are uh, very passionate about art, and uh, you, you you collect art, uh, and uh, and uh, so we the theme of today is uh, writing with art. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is something we discussed and we uh, in the last uh, few weeks. Tell us more about how can you write with art? How can you write a story with art? Well, this this um, the title. Um, uh, I, I thought about yesterday because um, uh, my uncle, my mother's brother, um, is a painter, was a painter, he died sadly uh, three years ago now, and uh, he used to say to me all the time, Marco, I am not a painter, but I am, I, I, I am a writer, I write with my paintings. So, um, and this is uh, very true because I believe that uh, through paintings, um, especially nowadays in, in our contemporary world, you can tell stories. And, um, you know, this is, this is my uncle. Um, his name is Renato Tosini. Um, he's uh, been painting all his life since he was uh, a little kid. And um, through his paintings, you could, you know, read so many stories. He used to paint this um, uh, sort of, these people, um, mm -hmm. sort of fat, fat people um, in the most surreal surroundings and situations. And um, all of these stories would come, would originate from his family, from a father, for example. He was, um, he's always been in awe of, I mean, always, um, dreaming to be him, maybe, uh, his fear uh, of, of such a man, uh, his desire to uh, go back to childhood. And, um, and it was fascinating to uh, listen to him describe his paintings. He was one of those artists that liked to describe what he did. Not many artists like that, but because his were stories, it was it was it was um, fascinating to um, listen to him. That's that's very interesting, and also I think it's very interesting the fact that uh, knowing him, of course, you can you can read the stories of your family in his paintings. And yes, they're more interested. Yes. I mean, I, I have to say I, I really like the paintings of your of your of your uncle. I mean, it reminds me of a, a bit of a, a Botero because of the fat um, yes. uh, people. It reminds me of uh, Dino Buzzato, uh, Buzzati. Uh, I mean, we talked about that, and uh, you know, of course, there's there's a lot of other references. Also, a bit of a uh, the metaphysic of uh, the Kirikos. Yes. But anyway, that's that's really fascinating. So, uh, what what other what other stories can we tell? Well, there is there is a kind of art that I've been very much um, drawn to um, very recently, which is called art brut. These are the artists that have to tell a story. They feel the urge of telling stories. They are not interested in the market. They are not interested in uh, selling what they do because it's this urge of expressing themselves. And, um, and fun enough, we go back to my family because uh, my mother, that's um, you know an interesting side of her life. Uh, late in her, I believe she was, uh, she might have been, she must have been seventies. Started to create works of art made of paper. Um, 
these kind of things, you know. Um, she started to create this, this um, and she didn't even know how all of this started, but it was um, a way she had of summarizing her life. Um, basically, um, it was fascinating to see her work. She had a, a way of working with her hands that, well, in a way, they were moved by uh, um, a force that was inside her. She never went to art school. She never did any course. She had to do it because she had to do it. And... Um, and what stories she would tell with those, uh, with, you know, with this, um, uh, with, with these artifacts. And in fact, and she was called una irregolare, meaning unruly, because these are artists that don't follow any rules, and they have to tell their story. Simple, as simple as that. That's that's very fascinating, and. Uh... Yeah, so, and, and also, of course, you know, when we talk about art, uh, uh, especially uh, the, the, let's say, let's call it the, the religious art. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, we talk about all that kind of art, which is uh, um, for centuries, uh, uh, the story of, uh, of, of Jesus Christ, of the Madonna, yes. of all the different, you know, it was part of the story of the painting. So, you could, you know, the, literally the paintings were, uh, stories. Uh, yes. Well, through those paintings, uh, you know, the so-called old masters, you can, you can, you know, uh, understand, apart from, you know, the religious, the, the religiousness which they want to portray, but you can get, you know, you can, you can uh, find out the way they dress, the way, what, what would they eat, and, and what, you know, um, what, kind of mood um, that particular artist was in when he painted them. If you look at Caravaggio, you know, Caravaggio was uh, dark and uh, uh, mysterious, um, then, uh, you know, moving on in the centuries to become a little bit more free, and, it, and it's, there is always, there is always something. Um, I used to do this, this, this very simple exercise, you know, because we are in London, we have museums like the National Gallery where you can get in for free. Uh, I, would, uh, I would go every lunchtime and I would sit in front of a picture, just one, for like maybe half an hour and study every little, you know, figure and detail. Poof, the amount of stories there, Carlo Ricardo, there were... It was, it is fantastic. That's really interesting. Also, going back to your mom, I, I was thinking while you were telling me more about her art, uh, the fact that she used uh, paper as well. To, yes. Uh, to build also her art, artwork is, uh, I mean, you, we, we, we do use uh, paper to write as well. So yes. again, there's another Absolutely. connection with, uh, with, uh, with your uncle and... Uh, Yes. Yeah. So that was really interesting. And if you think that my uncle and my grandfather used to have a stationery shop where they would sell paper and workbooks and, uh, you know, paper is very much part of our family. Uh, it's always been, and also paper, and I think one of the reasons why my mother used paper, um, it's very delicate and it tends to destroy itself because I believe the ultimate desire of my mother was that these works would be, you know, go with the time. Um, and, and when, you know, surviving is not important. It's just you tell the story, you listen to it, and then if you remember, that story will be in your mind, you know. But, but then at the same time, I think what is beautiful is the fact that your story with your uncle and your mom's story and their art, somehow yeah. they're all part of, the, of, of your family story. And I think that's yeah, so yeah. fascinating in a way. Yeah. So, Marco, th thanks so much for sharing your story. Because Thank that's you. what we did today. And really, you know, this, what a great opportunity to really find out more about you. Uh, some of the inspiration be uh, behind your art and your, uh, and your writing. So, thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy the, the espresso. Again, it's not... An espresso from Sicily, but you know, it's, 
is the best we can find in London. So yes. Thank you. Uh, grazie. Thank you. Grazie, Riccardo. Bye bye.